So back in section 4.2, we learned how to graph exponential functions, right? Functions of the form a times b to the x power. And what we saw is these graphs can look really different because a can be positive or negative, and b can be between 0 and 1, or it can be greater than 1. So that kind of gives you four different options. And depending on which of those options you fall in, the graph's going to look totally different. Well, in 4.4, as we saw in the previous video, we're learning how to graph log functions. But with log functions, there is no A, loosely speaking. Really, our initial goal is just to learn how to graph Y equals the log base B of X, where B is some number greater than 1. We don't have to worry about the case where B is between 0 and 1 like we did with exponentials, and we don't have to worry about the A. So kind of all of the basic log graphs look really similar. We're always going to have a vertical asymptote at X equals 0. We're always going to have an X intercept at 1. A fact that you can just memorize or you can talk yourself into this. And that's because no matter what the base is in your log function, the log base b for any b of 1 is always going to be equal to 0. And that's because regardless of what the base is, any number to the 0 power is equal to 1. Because log base b of 1 equals 0, that means when the x coordinate is 1, the y coordinate is 0. So we're always going through this point. Another always statement that I can make, which is really nice, is that we're always going to pass through the point b1. So whatever the base is of your log function, when we put in that number for the x value, we're always going to have 1 come out. And that's because this b, no matter what number it is, raised up to the 1 power, is always going to be equal to this b. So for example, if I want to know what the graph of log base 4 of x looks like, I'd have my vertical asymptote, I'd go through this point right here, and then I'd also go through the point 4, 1. If I know the basic shape of a log graph, I'm kind of done at that point. All right, there's y equals a log base 4 of x, give or take. What if we didn't want the log base 4 of x? What if we wanted, I don't know, y equals log base 2x? Still have the same vertical asymptote, still goes through this point 1, 0, but now it goes through the point 2, 1. My graph's going to look a little bit more like this. Sure. I guess I should have written y equals log base 4 a little bit lower down, so this is less confusing. There we go. Now I'm happy. One observation you might make is that the graphs kind of always have this shape and that larger values of b end up staying closer to the x-axis on the positive side. There's a quick recap of all the log graph stuff. It's not a whole lot. And because it's not a whole lot, often log graphs is a section that's going to be used to review something you learned earlier, function transformations. Function transformations are really important. It's been quite a while since we've seen them. So what a lot of teachers, myself included, do is they review those in this section, and that's what we're gonna do for the rest of this video. So function transformations. Remember, the idea there is we learned what the graph of y equals x squared looks like, and then we learned how this mess right here is really just a transformation of this graph y equals x squared. We have four different transformations. Two of them are vertical transformations, and two of them are horizontal transformations. Doesn't matter whether you do the vertical ones before the horizontal ones or the horizontal ones before the vertical ones, but it does matter of the two vertical ones, which one you do first and which one you do second. The vertical transformation you want to do first corresponds with this negative 2 right here. And what it tells you is you need to multiply all of the old y values by negative 2. Your vertical transformations are always going to deal with the y coordinate. Rather than say we're going to multiply the y's by negative 2, you could say we're going to reflect the graph vertically and then we're going to stretch it by a factor of 2. But I think it's easier to just say we're going to multiply by negative 2. The other vertical transformation corresponds with this positive 1 right here, and it tells us to add 1 to all of the y values. So if there's a point that started out with the y value of, I don't know, 4, we'd first multiply it by negative 2, and that would make it negative 8, and then we'd add 1, so it would end up at negative 7. We also have two horizontal transformations going on here. Horizontal transformations are the ones that affect the x-coordinate, and much like the vertical transformations, if there's more than one of them, the order that you apply them is very important. What I kind of remember about horizontal transformations, they're all kind of the opposite of what you'd think. So you might think you should apply the 3 before the 6 because multiplication comes before addition, but you don't. You actually apply this plus 6 first. Or maybe you're like, oh, it's a lot like this plus 1 where I had to add 1. I don't know why that says y. That should say 1. There we go. I guess that's better. Anyways, kind of like we added 1 to the y's here, you might think that this 6 tells you to add 6 to all of the x's. But it doesn't. Horizontal transformations are the opposite of what you'd think. So when you see a plus 6 here, you actually subtract 6 from all the x coordinates. Not only is the order that you apply your two transformations kind of backwards, but the way you apply them is kind of backwards. Instead of adding 6, we subtract 6. For this 3, instead of multiplying by 3, we're going to divide by 3. 
So if I considered a point that started out with an x coordinate of, I don't know, one, after I subtracted six from that x coordinate, it would be at negative five. And then when I divided it by three, it would end up at negative five thirds. Anyways, there's a quick review of what we spent a lot of time learning dealing with function transformations. Key thing for this section is we're not gonna be transforming y equals x squared. We're gonna be transforming y equals the log base b of x. So a problem analogous to this one with these four different transformations, the negative two, the three, the six, and the one would be y equals negative two times the log base b of three x plus six plus one. By the end of this video, we're gonna learn how to graph this. And if you can graph this for any value of b greater than one in here, then you're good. This is a pretty hard thing to graph. There's a lot going on here. So maybe we start with a couple that are a little bit more doable. What if you wanted to sketch y equals the log base four of x plus two minus three? What I would do is first sketch y equals the log base four of x. You're like log base four of x. Let's see, okay, it's a log graph. So it starts out with a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. It's a log graph. So it always goes through the point one zero. And because the base is four, it's gonna go through the point four, one. I connect the dots with something that has roughly the shape of these log graphs, and I call that good. Here's y equals the log base four of x. But that's not my answer because I'm not supposed to be sketching the log base four of x. I wanna sketch the log base four of x plus two minus three. So it's up to you to figure out what this plus two does to this graph and what this minus three does to this graph. One of those two is a vertical transformation. One of those two is a horizontal transformation. Doesn't matter which I do first. The vertical transformation is the one corresponding with this negative three. That tells me to subtract three from all the y's. The horizontal transformation is the one corresponding with this plus two. You might think add two to all the x's, but don't. You're actually gonna subtract two from all the x's. Those are the only two transformations we have going on. So if we do both of those two things, we're done. Something that's a little bit tricky about transforming log graphs is not only do you wanna transform all the different points on the graph, but you also wanna transform the vertical asymptote. It's a little bit weird, but it's actually easier than you'd think. The vertical asymptote here at x equals zero is this line that goes straight up and down. It's infinitely long, so when I subtract three from all of the y coordinates on this line, the line kinda of shifts down three units, but I don't even notice it because it's an infinitely long line. This vertical transformation, in fact, all vertical transformations will have no effect on your vertical asymptote, but your horizontal transformation will. If I subtract two from all the x values, that's gonna move this line two units to the left. So my new asymptote is gonna be over here at x equals negative two. What about the points on the graph? Well, I had this point where x equals one and y equals zero. If I subtract three from the y values, this becomes negative three. If I subtract two from the x values, this becomes negative one. So this point moves to negative one, negative three. Similarly, this point that starts out at four, one, if I subtract two from its x coordinates, the new x coordinate is two. And if I subtract three from its y coordinates, the new y coordinate is negative two. I didn't do a great job of setting up the axes to graph this, but hopefully this is enough where we can do stuff. I wanna draw a log graph with this asymptote that goes through these two points. Loosely speaking, it's gonna look like this. Sure, I guess that's good enough. This is y equals the log base four of x plus two minus three. Let's do another one. In this example, we have three times the log base three of one half x plus two. How are you gonna start? Sketch the graph of y equals the log base three of x, the untransformed log graph. Well, let's see, I know there's gonna be a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. I know it's gonna go through the point one, zero, and because the base of this log is three, I know it's gonna go through the point three, one. I connect the dots with something that has roughly the log graph shape, and I call that good. Here's the graph approximately of y equals the log base three of x. But that's not what I want. I wanna sketch the graph of three times the log base three of one half x plus two. We have three different transformations, one corresponding with this three, one corresponding with this one half, and one corresponding with this two. It'd be nice if you could recognize which of those are vertical, which of those are horizontal, and what order to apply them. We only have one vertical transformation that corresponds with this three, and it tells me to multiply all of the y values by three. We have two horizontal transformations, so the order that I apply them is very important. You might think do the one half before the two because multiplication before addition, but don't because horizontals are backwards. 
we're going to apply the two first. You see a plus two, you're thinking add two, but horizontals are backwards, so subtract two from all the x's. Then, after you do that, apply the transformation corresponding with this one half. You might think multiply by one half, but you don't. You actually divide by one half, but dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two. So we're going to multiply the x's by two, maybe aka divide by one half. If we can apply those transformations, we're done. Doesn't matter if you do the verticals first or the horizontals first. Maybe since there's two horizontals, I'll take care of those. Horizontals are the ones that are going to affect my asymptote. My asymptote starts out at an x value of zero. When I subtract two from it, it moves over here to an x value of negative two. But then when I multiply it by two, ugh, I didn't plan this one out either. Negative two times two is negative four. My vertical asymptote is going to be right here going through all of this text. I also need to multiply all of the y values on this vertical asymptote by three, which stretches the line vertically by a factor of three. But it was already an infinitely long line, so when I stretch it, it's still just an infinitely long line. I don't have to worry about vertical transformations for the asymptote. Do something analogous for these two points and we're done. Points start out at one, zero. It's got an x coordinate of one. If I subtract two from one, I'm over here at negative one. And then if I multiply negative one by two, I end up over here at negative two. But remember, that's just the horizontal transformations. I still have to apply the vertical transformations. Now I'm thinking about the y coordinate of this point. The y coordinate of this point is zero, and zero times three is still zero, so it stays right there. What about this point that started out with an x value of three? Well, if I subtract two from that x value, now I'm over here with an x value of one. Then I have to multiply that x value by two. One times two is two, so in the horizontal direction, I end up right here. What about the vertical direction? Well, the y coordinate initially was one, but I have to multiply all the y coordinates by three, so the new y coordinate is gonna be three, point's going to end up up here. It takes quite the journey to get there, but it'd be nice if you could follow that the point ends up at 2, 3. Whereas this point that started out at 1, 0 ends up at negative 2, 0. Connect the dots and you're done. Pictured in pink is an approximate graph of y equals 3 times the log base 3 of 1 half x plus 2. One more example, then we'll call this video good. What about y equals negative 2 times the log base 2 of 3x plus 6 plus 1? Wow, a lot going on here. How are we going to start? First, sketch y equals the log base 2 of x. I know the vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 0. I know it's going to go through the point 1, 0. And I know it's going to go through the point 2, which is way out here, 1, somewhere up here. Because it always goes through the point b1, implying the role of b is 2. The original graph, y equals the log base 2 of x, looks something like what you see pictured in pink here. Now I apply my transformations. We have four transformations here. This is as hard as these problems can become. Maybe I'll do the horizontal transformations first. The reason I'm going to do them in that order is because I don't have a whole lot of room over here, but I believe when I apply my horizontal transformations, it's going to kind of push stuff this way. Let's see if that happens. I have two horizontal transformations, one corresponding with this 6, one corresponding with this 3. I want to first apply the one corresponding with this 6, which tells me to subtract 6 from all the x's. After I do that, I want to apply the transformation corresponding with this 3, which tells me to divide the x-coordinate by 3. Maybe I'll do that right now so we have like an intermediate step. This point started out with an x-coordinate of 1. If I subtract 6 from 1, I end up at negative 5. But then if I divide negative 5 by 3, I get negative 5 thirds. In other words, negative 1 and 2 thirds. In other words, negative 1.667. I end up right here. What about this point that started out with an x coordinate of 2? If I subtract 6 from 2, I'm at negative 4. And then if I divide negative 4 by 3, I'm at negative 4 thirds. In other words, negative 1 and a third. I end up right here. Not only do I have to transform these two points, I also have to transform the vertical asymptote. It started out with an x coordinate of 0. If I subtract 6 from 0, I get negative 6. And if I divide negative 6 by 3, I get negative 2. My new vertical asymptote is going to be right here at negative 2. I can connect the dots, even though this isn't my final answer, to get an idea of what the graph of y equals the log base 2 of 3x plus 6 looks like. It's the log base 2 of x graph after we apply the transformations corresponding with the 3 and the 6. Note, this is not our final answer. Our final answer also applies the transformations according to this negative 2 and this positive 1. 
Those are both vertical transformations. For the vertical transformations, first I want to multiply all the y's by negative 2. Then I want to add 1 to all the y values. And then I'm done. Remember, vertical transformations do not affect my vertical asymptote here. So I just need to do that to these two points. This point started out with the y coordinate of 0. 0 times negative 2 is still 0. And then if I add 1, each time I try to write 1, I write y for some reason. Ugh, sorry for all the mistakes. If I add 1 to the y coordinate, this point right here ends up with the height of 1. So I get 0 times negative 2 is 0, plus 1 leads me to 1. This point starts out with the y coordinate of 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. All I have to do is sketch something that has my log shape with this vertical asymptote that goes through these two points. And you might be like, whoa, how's that work? Like you start out here and then do some sort of weird, what's going on here? No, not at all. The fact that I multiplied all the y coordinates by negative two has the geometric effect of flipping the graph. So it's gonna end up kind of looking like this. Sure, good enough. Here is y equals negative two times the log base two of three x plus six plus one. About as hard of a problem as I can make for graphing transformed log functions.